Andy Mogul. Friday 101 is about to begin. If you're looking for a particular segment, click one of the topics listed below. The 180 degree rule is one of the most basic rules to follow while shooting your movies. It creates spatial awareness, giving the viewer a sense of where characters are in relation to each other, which in turn allows the brain to understand the staging of a scene without having to actually see the whole set. And that's pretty much it. That's the rule. It's easy to define, but now let's have a look at this rule in action. That's not milk, that's egg whites! This scene, we didn't break the 180 line, and you probably had no trouble telling who was where. Also, look at where we are in the frame. I'm slightly on the left side, looking right, and Chad is vice versa. Put the two of us side by side, and if done properly, it should look like we're right across from each other. No wonder the cereal's so good. Now that's an easy one to do, so let's take a look at a more complex two shot. Here's my producer and cameraman, Jason, on the ground, doing his best to look like he's just been beat up without using any fake blood because we don't want to make a mess in his kitchen right now. And there's me, holding a gun, looking down on him with all the dramatic flair I can muster. Side by side, the eye lines match up, and your brain can put the whole thing together, even cutting between a wide shot and an extreme close-up. Reverse the shot of Jason, and suddenly it becomes an awkward cut. In fact, let's do another yelling scene, but this time, let's do it all wrong. I hate you. I hate your guts. I hate everything around your guts, you gutter snipe. You know, the more I look at you, the more I want to throw up in my mouth and swallow it back. And why don't you start dressing like a man, not some child? You lack vision. Plain and simple. <laughs> Now while you could probably still tell what was going on as far as your brain's spatial awareness is concerned, we may as well just be sitting right next to each other, yelling in the same direction. Why are you guys yelling at me? That's the gist of how it works. Now I'm not big on rules, per se, when it comes to filmmaking. I think of them more as loose guidelines than gospel. I love filmmakers who bend the rules or completely break them, yet still make things work. For example, one of my favorite TV shows of all time was the show The Shield, which had a habit of breaking the 180 rules seemingly more often than they followed it. But this was all part of its style, and it would give the viewer a feeling of disorientation. Another great show, In Treatment, had a very simple visual style throughout most of the episodes. They mostly consisted of 20 to 30 minutes of of a few people talking to each other across from one another, and followed the 180 rule the entire time. But when there was a shift in the conversation, when the mood would change, or whoever had the upper hand in the conversation changed, the camera would either slowly or suddenly switch sides. It also helped to very subconsciously take what was essentially one long conversation scene and make it feel like it had been broken down into multiple scenes. And finally, one of my favorite examples of having fun with the 180 rule was in Joe Carnahan's BMW film, Ticker, putting the camera directly onto the 180 line from both sides, having the actors speak their lines in the same direction while having it staged so it still felt like they were looking at each other. It creates an effect that goes beyond disorienting and reaches a point of unsettling, but in a really, really awesome looking way. I just want to thank everyone who watched last week's show and left us such nice comments. I guess the subliminal lamp is going to have to become a thing on this show. Uh, so many people really enjoyed that. So for now, it sticks around. Also, thank you to everyone who wrote into our email, friday101mail at gmail.com. It's a shame I'll only be doing the chopping block segment every once in a while, as I received a lot of entries for that. The first one should be in a week or two. But in relation to this week's topic, Jordan Fountain of the very funny channel Fountain Films wrote to me asking about how to use the 180 rule when you have three actors. He sent a short film of his to use as an example. Arr, stop, stop, stop. Now I'm not sure if there's a by the book answer on this one, but I'll tell you what I think would work. So you have your three actors, actors A, B, and C. Pick two actors, in this case, A and C. This line here will be the action axis. All camera angles between A and C will be on the bottom of that line. Draw two other lines to connect to actor B, always keeping the camera so that actor A is always looking right at the other two. Actor B has to look left at A and right at C. And actor C is looking left regardless of who they're looking at. Now in Jordan's video, which I'll link to at the end, for the most part he got this right, but there was one angle this one here, where the actor is looking in the wrong direction, compared to the direction he was looking later in the video. Oh god! Nah, I think he needs something else, like some more action or comedy or something. 
My absolute favorite movie of all time, hands down, is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which is famous, amongst many other reasons, for its three-way showdown climax. All the camera angles follow the 180 rule. Tuco, on the left, looks right off-camera to see Angel Eyes in the middle. He looks straight at the camera when looking at Blondie. Blondie does the opposite, being straight across from Tuco, and Angel Eyes in the middle looks back and forth. And as far as I'm concerned, if Sergio Leone did it, that's a good way to go. A South Korean remake, The Good, The Bad, The Weird, also had a three-way showdown at the end, but they were going for that disorienting feel that was mentioned earlier, so the camera angles are all over the place. But it still totally works because that's what the movie was going for. That's it for this week. Before we go, last week we received a lot of responses from viewers talking about what they felt were the best affordable cameras, with various people championing Sony or Nikon DSLRs and especially bringing up the Panasonic GH2. Those are all great cameras as well, and a good case could be made for any one of them. And if you feel like you're the one to make that case, we encourage you to make a video response so we can link to it as part of the playlist at the end. Last week, the editing resource sent us a response talking about his own inexpensive lens collection, so when future viewers of the show are looking at affordable cameras and lenses, his video will always be attached to it at the end as well. So if you have any opinions, agreeing or disagreeing, or adding to anything said on today's show, and all shows in the future, we strongly encourage you to record yourself and send it to us. We want all the sides of every issue that we can get. The buttons are on screen now, a few videos related to what we talked about today, and the viewer response button. So let's get a few responses this week, shall we? I look forward to seeing them. Have a great weekend, and don't forget to check back with Indie Mogul next week on Monday for Indie News with the wonderfully bearded Griffin Hammond. Have a good week.